Alright everyone, so I know it's been a while since the last one, but today I've got another spicy tips and tricks uh, wallpaper uh, effect for you again. Alright, so in today's episode I'm gonna teach you all how to properly animate fire. Um, or at least use two effects to create, uh, make this fire feel way more alive. Alright, so we're gonna do uh, this in two ways. First, we're gonna have to make uh, a heat distortion. Because whenever you see fire or something incredibly hot, it always distorts the air around it because a little bit because of the heat. Uh, we want to get at that distortion as well. But just the distortion makes the fire nothing more than bland and it makes it look a bit weird. So aside from the distortion, we're also going to give the direction in which it moves. These two effects combined make fire quite lively. So how do we do this? Right. To achieve this, we need two effects. One water ripple and two water flow. I know, ironic, we're to animate fire we're going to use water effects. First off we're going to start with water ripple. Now when you add this effect it, all it does is just create one giant ripple effect on your entire uh, f uh, screen, your entire image. Obviously that's not what we want. But first before I'm going to start drawing what we want to have rippled and what not I'm going to explain the settings real quick. Animation speed, quite obvious on its own. It determines how fast your uh, ripple effect plays. Usually I just put it to 0.1 because this makes it quite slow but still clearly visible. Ratio. Ratio basically determines how uh, compressed your ripple is. I would just put this, uh, leave the setting on 1 and not touch it unless you just want to see what it does and maybe it will improve your wallpaper. I rarely touch it anyway. Ripple strength. Ripple strength basically just decides uh, the size of a single ripple. Um, the bigger you put this, the more distorted it also gets. So you don't really want to give big numbers to these as well. So I'm going to put it back to 0 0.1 for now. And the ripple scale is basically um, in uh, the, 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 excuse me, uh, brain fart. Ripple scale basically determines how many ripples he's gonna place on one part of your image, of your layer. The higher the scale, the more small ripples there will be. So the higher you put it, the more distorted it gets. The lower you put it, you'll only have like small, uh, a, low, a low amount on your entire image. Right, so we're gonna put this to 0 0.1 again. Oh, 1, excuse me. Alright, the scroll direction and the scroll speed. Basically, if you want your ripple effect to have a direction it's moving, with the new upcoming scroll uh, direction that everyone should be having sometime soon, you'll be able to choose in which direction it will flow. If you don't have the scroll wheel right now, you still have the scroll direction um, uh, value, you'll just have to manually put a number into it. All right. The scroll direction on its own doesn't do anything if the scroll speed is zero. If I say, for example, put the scroll speed to 0.3, you can see that's quite quickly moving in a single direction. Which is quite handy in some cases. Right, so we're going to just reset all these things. And this is basically what we have from the beginning, with animation speed set to 0.1. Next, what we want to do is we're just going to call it fire ripple effect, because that's what it is. Then we're going to draw the opacity mask. I would suggest using a low opacity for softer edges here, a low hardness, same reason, and start the value with something like 156, somewhere in the middle. Then you just want to slowly but surely draw over the fire. Basically uh, the trick, if you want uh, to know which parts you want to have a ripple effect on and whatnot, if it glows and it's uh, and the source of the glow is the fire, you want to have a ripple effect on it. All right, so all right, we've got our basic ripple effects here, but the thing is, you could leave it as it is now, but it would look a little bit less realistic. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the value here. Gonna grab a slower, uh, lower size and just add around here as well because in the mouth of the dragon it would be hot as well. And the, the last parts around here that shouldn't be as high or hot as well. Just add a slight uh, difference in your opacity. Then uh, these men they shouldn't have this much distortion on them as well. So we're gonna use a really small value and just draw over them again. So they'll still have this ripple effect. 
but it's much ma smaller compared to the rest of the air because I mean the breath and the air is hotter than the guys uh, presumably if they're going to survive this attack now you don't really have to be point precise with this ripple effect and it doesn't really matter if it's looking quite bad at this point either because we're gonna tweak these uh, ripples anyway right, so we wanted to the bottom side of the dragon's mouth as well a bit. Right, there we go. Right, so now we got our basic ripple effect. This is part one. Right, now we've drawn everything. Now we want to make sure it looks a bit nice because these teeth, they're, they're just uh, moving way too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale back the ripple scale. I'm gonna say to 0 0.5 for example. Right, now it's much smaller like much more gentle distortions. Then I'm gonna set the strength to, let's say, what happens if I go it, throw it up. All right, this distorts it way too much. This basically ruins it uh, again, so I'm gonna tweak it back. So what happens if we put it to 0 0.07, for example? All right, now I've got a small distortion, but it's not really noticeable. So I'm gonna put it to 0 0.09, and we're gonna tweak with the scale a bit more. I'm gonna say, let's put it to 0 0.6. Alright, so these teeth, we will be able to adjust them with the opacity mask. Because right now, no matter what I do, they'll always be moving a bit too much. This, however, is the part that we want to focus on the most. So, alright, so how do we make this look nice? Just tweak these, the ripple strength and the ripple scale, until you're satisfied with the result. So I would say this is a bit too much, so I'm going to draw it back again. I know this is mostly trial and error, you're ra rarely gonna get this right oh, on the first try. But I'll start with these settings. Alright, so then I'll pass the mask and I'm gonna reduce the teeth strength here. Because this is way moving way too much. Here as well. Alright. So now we can with the scroll direction because this fire is obviously moving in this direction now we can also with the scroll direction just simply drag it in the way the fire is moving around let's say minus 80 let's round it up looks nice and then put a scroll speed on it all right now we've got a direction the fire is moving and as well a distortion in that, in that uh, direction this is basically it for the ripple effect um, now, if we want to make sure that the fire moves as well, then we're gonna have, uh, gonna add the flow effect. So, what I do always here before I start uh, drawing in another direction, I put the speed on 0.3 and the strength on 0.3 because I find it way easier to uh, draw my mask and uh, uh, change the settings when they're low because there's not too much movement. So you can just uh, slowly scale it up or downwards, and you don't have to make big jumps. So we're gonna call this fire flow effect because it's fire and it, it's gonna be a flow effect then the same thing as with the ripple low opacity low hardness start with the low value so you can up it uh, here for example or lower it and then what we want to do is first we're just gonna grab a big brush and just draw the direction of the fire then we want the fire to move Let's say and here a little bit more up all right now obviously everything's moving too much, but that's not really our main concern right now. First, we want to also make sure that it looks a bit nice. So let's say we're going to put our strength to 0.4. I would argue this is a bit too much movement of the fire. So I'm going to scale this back to 0.3 and this to 0.4. Right, now it's moving a bit more quick. The next step is just set the value to 0 and cut away everything that's moving that's not supposed to move. So let's do that. Just this is moving, I don't want this to move, let's get away, all of it gone, I don't want these teeth and all the, and this entire mouth to move, I ju want just the fire to move, here it pulls a bit much forward, so draw it back, same goes for all these rocks, you don't want these rocks moving, we're gonna get to the man later on, because that's more of the fine details, so we're just gonna remove these rocks from having this weird effect. Alright. Looks like I've got basically all the rocks. Oh, here a bit more. This isn't supposed to move either. Alright. 
Next up, the man. Basically the same process. You just draw over what's moving and that's not supposed to move. Make sure that there's nothing uh, happening that you don't want to. Obviously, for example, I'm currently drawing this opacity mask, but if I want to change my settings, like I want to increase the strength, uh, then you'll probably have to adjust your opacity mask as well. Right now, for example, this man does not have anything uh, moving behind him. But if I change the strength to 0 0.5, for example, he's gonna have this again. So, you usually want to tweak these settings before you uh, alter your opacity mask and cut away uh, some parts. Otherwise, you'll just end up giving yourself additional work. And I mean, yeah, you'll, get, you'll be able to uh, be more precise, but it takes a lot of additional time and you basically get the same result, so. But ultimately, this is a process, it's a creative process, so it's always up to the, uh, the person who starts and the, who starts it and works on it. As long as you're proud of what you're delivered, that's the most important part. Alright, and this one as well. I don't want you nor your sword to move. Alright, so now we've created a bit of a flowing uh, animation for the fire as well. If we combine this with a ripple effect, boom, we've got a fire breathing dragon. Now of course you can also just, if the ripple effect for example is moving way uh, quicker than the flow animation, so if you want to uh, tweak these to make them uh, look nice together, because if this is too quick or too slow, you can always just slow down the animation speed of this one. Or the scroll speed of this one, 0.1. Basically, once you've integrated them together, they look uh, created the effects both, and both effects look in, uh, nice on their own individually. That's the part when you want to start tweaking these settings if you don't really like the result. But that's it for this one. Uh, this is essentially how you just uh, create a living fire effect uh, from the ripple and flow effect both combined. You can also use them individually but I think they complement each other real well and yeah that's basically it for me. So I'm gonna sign off and uh, I'll catch you on the next one if you are willing to watch it of course. Alright, happy wallpapering! <laughs>